It's a tricky question all, all around. But uh, sure. someone just asked me, all the whistleblowers have been treated very badly, true. And the question was, uh, why is Assange apparently, who seems to be on the edge of death, according to 60 doctors, why has he been treated, why do you think he's been treated even worse? Not even answer, by the way, what's your take? You know, actually, for me, I, I think it's not so difficult to answer. Uh, I, I think when we look at the context, um, the Assange case is exceptional for a lot of reasons, and that gives the U.S. government uh, a lot more latitude um, in unusual ways. They feel a little bit of uh, a restriction, or they did under the Obama administration, which, uh, by the way, considered the precise charges that have been brought against them today, uh, but declined uh, to bring those under Eric Holder. Uh, under the uh, theory that if you brought these against Assange, uh, it would mean the Espionage Act could be applied to any other journalist in the world, uh, which is correct, right? Even if you disagree and go, you know, I don't like what Assange does, he's not a journalist. Uh, as a matter of law, he is. He's not a source. He's not an American uh, citizen. Uh, he owes no loyalty to the United States. Um, he is simply a publisher. Right, uh, And all they have done, all they're being charged for, in fact, is uh, activities that are related to publishing. Now, the government goes, he crossed the line um, because Manning was talking to him uh, about uh, getting material or trying to seek aid from Assange, uh, basically in cracking a password uh, that was on one of these Pentagon systems. Uh, now, the interesting thing here is uh, the reporters every day uh, ask sources for more uh, material, more information. Can they get more documents? Is it related to this? Do they know anything about that? Um, that happened with me uh, from journalists that were not just uh, like outsiders, sort of Laura Poitras, Glenn Greenwald, but from like uh, Barton Gellman uh, type journalists. Uh, this would be a two time Pulitzer Prize winning uh, Washington Post reporter. Um, and this is the same. Uh, when I came forward, uh, um, Woodward, I think, uh, Woodward and Bernstein, um, went on the news and he said, uh, you know, if I had come to him, uh, he would have told me not to come forward. Uh, he would have told me not to uh, basically say I did this. Uh, he would have told me to stay in place like a spy and continue to feed him stories and, and new material or new uh, information about different kinds of programs and so on and so forth. Uh, so he could have a continuing relationship with someone who had continued access to what was actually going on behind the cover. So this, as much as we might not like it, is standard uh, journalistic practice. Now, um, for Assange, that's really problematic that they can go, well, there's these other computer-related charges. Uh, and originally, uh, they only charged him under this one count, this sort of computer uh, access charge related um, count. But they did that, um, and a lot of journalists uh, were actually supportive of it, uh, because they, they don't like Assange, uh, particularly given what happened with the 2016 uh, reporting. Uh, and so they, they sort of let that slide, but that emboldened the government. And for reasons that today are, are still not clear, uh, they brought an extraordinary number of additional counts, uh, which are not related uh, to computer stuff, um, but are actually just related to his publication activity. And what's interesting here is even though it's the 2016 reporting that uh, makes WikiLeaks and Assange so controversial today, the government's charges are related to his 2009 work with Manning, which is some of the best work uh, that WikiLeaks has ever done, uh, which is really uncontroversially uh, reporting that was in the public interest. Now, why is he being treated uh, exceptionally relative to other people? Well, one, he is an exception. Uh, no journalist, no publisher uh, has ever been tried under this kind of rubric that we face today. Uh, second, when you think about conditions and pressure, um, that we uh, haven't seen. I mean, when you look at the case of Manning, um, remember, Manning was held in uh, conditions that the UN Special Rapporteur on Torture uh, said were equivalent to torture. Uh, cruel, inhuman, uh, or degrading treatment and punishment is the uh, formal legal language for the, the UN, I believe. 
Um, but they found that that was consistent with how men were treated. Now, in the case of Sarge, uh, which sets this aside more than any other one, uh, is that it forces the United States government to make its case in an international uh, forum, international venue. Um, Assange has actively resisted uh, extradition um, and even trial in the United States, so, which I don't think is a mistake in that context, because again, uh, this is a publisher, whether you agree or disagree with the work, um, we do have to recognize it is publishing activity that is being charged for. Uh, he uh, actively resisted this, right? He sought asylum, he did all of these things, he's uh, getting his legal team to try to contest these charges. And I think the U.S. government, uh, and particularly the U.S. intelligence community, who we know is the driving force behind this uh, sort of persecutory activity, um, is trying to set an example. Uh, and I think clearly when you look at everything that's happened in the past, uh, when you look at the case of Manning, when you look at the case of, of myself, where I faced uh, probably one of the biggest man hunts, uh, particularly for a nonviolent offender, in the history of the United States. I mean, they grounded the diplomatic aircraft of the president of a country, uh, that would be Evo Morales in, in Bolivia, uh, just on a mere rumor that I was on board seeking asylum. Uh, they are trying to show uh, that when they want you, they will get you. Uh, and if you try to resist, it is going to make things worse. Uh, and, and so I think that is, that is, when you look at it, what the key motivations behind it are. Um, and I honestly have to say, I don't think uh, Assange's chances are, are very good here. Um, I think if you look at the international law perspective, <laughs> although I'm not a lawyer, uh, I've had quite a bit of extradition advice from uh, lawyers in many different countries at this point. Um, there's really no question um, that Assange would not and does not qualify for extradition under any fair reading of the law, uh, particularly under these Espionage Act adjacent charges. Um, however, that's under a fair reading of the law. Uh, in the United Kingdom, um, unfortunately, in their courts uh, have not shown a lot of independence. Um, historically in these kind of cases. Uh, we've seen from the British government, they've already at the political level approved formally his extradition. Uh, so long as the courts go along with it, politically they're not going to intervene. Uh, and, and so it's really a, 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 a clear court here. Um, if the judges uh, don't make an 11th hour reversal, um, and so far in the procedural steps they have ruled uniformly against Assange, uh, even when the law says that they, they should not have. Um, right now, for example, uh, he should not be in prison. Uh, he's already served his sort of custodial portion of the sentence for the bail skipping in the embassy. Uh, and so he should have been held in lesser conditions now, uh, but he's still being held in sort of uh, supermax equivalent charge, or su supermax equivalent conditions um, in the UK, which as far as I'm aware, uh, has no precedent in UK law. Uh, he is really being handled exceptionally. And so if you look at all of this, um, the thing that I would, I would ask of people in the room, uh, if, if there's any holdouts there who are skeptical of Assange, because again, they don't like the outcome of the reporting, um, is to go, look, even if you hate Assange, I mean, even if you think he's the worst person on earth, uh, think about the ACLU um, in Skokie. Uh, defending Nazis uh, trying to march through a Jewish neighborhood. Um, sometimes you have to defend uh, defendants who you really don't like, whose activities you really don't approve of, um, because the activities that they are engaged in uh, centrally connect to larger common rights. Uh, that if we weaken in an individual case, uh, we permanently weaken in the collective case. Hey, Ed. 